In today's video, I'm going to show you a difference between using a speed light and on camera flash and a diffuser when it comes to macro photography. So, this is a speed light which you attach onto your camera, and this little thing, yeah, this is a game changer. So an on-camera speed light or a flash is going to give you that additional light that you need if you're shooting with a fast shutter speed and a closed down aperture because, well, with macro photography, the shallow depth of field is a problem. So F11, F16 aperture is going to be kind of a constant if you want to capture the whole subject in focus. But you need to have a shutter speed of at least one two hundredth of a second because everything's moving and when you're magnified, now you get motion blur. So the lack of light is then substituted with a speed light. But having just a speed light pointing forward from your lens, you're actually going to miss all the action because the light is going to shoot away from where the subject is, which is straight in front of the lens. So this is where you get a diffuser to actually diffuse the light, bouncing it off down towards the subject and right in front of the lens. And since it's a bigger surface area, you get a nice soft light. Summer has started, which means that it's really, really hot here at the Arboretum, which I'm again here with Alex, and we're having popcorn and a little bit of Budweiser for the dad. But you can also use the diffuser as a diffuser. So basically you take away the harsh shadows and the highlights by just putting the diffuser above the subject and then photographing that. Of course, you will lose a lot of the light, so this only makes sense in complete sunshine. Yeah, and if I add the shade, instantly I'm getting a better light. So this is with the shade, with the diffuser, without the diffuser, and with the diffuser. You can see the difference. It's just such a more pleasing image right here. Now when it comes to speed lights, I would recommend buying a speed light that is somewhere mid-range. Don't buy the cheapest one, which is just like this. Make sure that the speed light has a tilting and a rotating head. This is going to get you far better results, especially if you're photographing indoors. And also the speed light that I'm using, which is the Quadralight Strobo 60S. Now that S stands for Sony and it can attach to my Sony camera because the hot shoe mount is actually, or the hot shoe plate here, has pins on it, which is active, which means that when I attach the speed light to my camera, I basically get one full unit and the camera and the speed light talk to each other. So I can use TTL mode or auto mode, which is really helpful in situations when you're running on photo Photographing. The one useful scenario for the diffuser is whenever you're shooting portraits outside with a flash or a speed light, then if you add the diffuser, it's just going to soften that light a little bit more. Now, whenever you're photographing outside, you don't want the flash to just illuminate the face. You just want to brighten it up a little bit, brighten up the shadow. So this is what I'll be doing right now. Ah. Uh, Mm, yummy! Oh my God. <laughs> I need to attach this to my lens, but I want to keep it here in the front so that I can use the focus ring if I need to. And there you go. So the diffuser in front of the flash, which is going to make the light source appear a little bit bigger. Let's take some portraits. Okay, so first I'll take a shot without the speed light and without the diffuser, just to get kind of a reference. And Alex is a very small kid, so I'm going to have to, uh, you know, Okay, let's go like this. So now I'm gonna turn on the flash, set my ISO to 100, set my shutter speed to, well, actually, I'm going to set it first to 1 100th of a second, like this. And then, of course, aperture is going to be f2.8, just to get a, a nice shallow depth of field. Now, I'm going to use the TTL mode, uh, which is the auto mode. That basically means that the camera and the flash, as they are one unit now, um, the flash is going to fire a pre-burst and then the camera is going to register that light and then adjust the power on the flash for a second burst and that's when the actual photo is taken in a nutshell. So let's let's try this. Okay. Okay, wow, it was a flashy light. Okay, so that was way too much. So I'm going to tone it down using TTL. I'm going to go two stops under. So whatever the camera and the speed light determine is the right um, um, exposure, I'm going to tone the power down for two stops from that reference point. So let's try this. Hello. Hello. So this is a very close up photograph like this. Now let's try it with the diffuser. Okay, so with the diffuser in front of, 
the camera, I can still use the TTL mode. Hello, Hello. smile, happy face. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and I can punch this down just a little bit more. So basically, just like with any flash photography, you need to find the balance between the background brightness and the subject brightness. Okay, so I think around one hundredth of a second is just the right one. One more shot. There you go. Now the cool thing about this is that you get two of these pieces for about nine dollars or nine euros and it's really just a disposable thing. I mean you can keep it safe and not get it dirty but I get mines always dirty so I have to constantly change them. So now I have a new set of these and I can show you the benefit of having it. Now even a small accessory like this can make a really big difference in your macro photography as you saw in the photographs. It can also make a difference in portrait photography when you're using a speed light outside. So it just softens out those shadows just a teeny teeny tiny bit. So I will leave you with this video over here if you guys want to stay on the channel. If you have any comments or questions leave that down in the comment section. Subscribe, like and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.